How is life since you moved to Los Angeles? Uh, life is good um, under the palm tree. Uh, it's a very uh, different atmosphere from New York, as you must know. Um, I feel like it fits me better. I talk Spanish all the time. Um, I go to the theater, you know, beside works. Um, it's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a nice city where I feel like the life quality is a little, um, it's a little more um, chill, you know, than New York. So tell me about your second time really? directing a film. Um, how did it come about? How did it come out? Yeah, how did it come about? The story. You're meeting with her. So I was invited by a friend to the premiere of a documentary made by um, uh, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter. And it was a documentary about um, the jail system in Los Angeles. And so my friend invited me to the premiere. Uh, I was also involved in the, um, in the process of uh, this documentary because I was doing... Um, I was transforming a jail bed into kind of a sarcophagus and they were spreading all the jail beds in Los Angeles to protest against um, the construction of new jails for like billions of dollars. Los Angeles already has the biggest uh, jail system in the world, in the free world. Anyway, so I was invited at this projection and I was by myself and uh, CD Bay, uh, the, the artist and singer, was there and we just like sit next to each other and we were like talking about um, the documentary, you know, and after we took a drink and we met again and she made me listen to her music and I was, um, I was mesmer mesmerized uh, by her voice, also by her like uh, charisma and her, her passion, you know. She was, we went simply in her car and she was like putting very loud the music and um, I just told her I, re I really like it because I'm, I've always been pretty into R&B. Uh, hip hop music, R and B, um, soul. So that was kind of the first time I met someone that was like musically very related to what what, what I'm trying to do um, visually. So I was pretty excited, and we just talked about like. I just arrived to LA, like, what's your life about, where do you come from, all those things. We became friends and I told her, you know, one day if you like want a music video, I'd love to direct it. Because I feel a deep connection with your music. And she came, she came back to me like a few months later and she was like, this song, what should one do? I think it's very, it's an optimistic song. It's very feminine. Um, I think you could totally match, you know, with your vibe. And at this moment, I was making a lot of drawings, a little like erotic sci-fi with like women um, riding alligator and stuff. And um, I think that was kind of um, related to uh, what we did together. So that's how everything uh, begins. And um, tell me about your first director, directorial debut. Before this. So before this, I was um, directing um, most of the music video for the brand I co-founded, Holy Fire. So when I was doing the art direction for this uh, jewelry brand, of course I was involved in uh, the process um, of making images. So it wasn't only like designing the jewelry, but it was also um, 
coming with the storytelling, you know, around the jewelry and also like the mise en scène. So with um, with my partner Celia, we were like uh, creating the sets and creating the props, creating the costumes, and we came out with uh, the first music video I directed for Kilasan, which is uh, the Black Crook which was um, the story of a sorcerer, kind of a pimp sorcerer, like very unhappy with his life, that was trying to get back the holy fire, you know. And um, all that to say that uh, I already had experiences of coming with a storytelling, make a story bomb, um, directing singer, uh, creating the whole universe around um, the music. Uh, for uh, for Kilasan, for for the Black Rock music video, it was a little different because it was inside of a brand. Um, the goal was to show the universe, you know, like um, the soul of what we were doing with the jewelry, and the music at the time was created for the brand. This context with Bay was different because I had to um, go from her music and take it as a, as a frame, you know, um, and bring inside of this frame uh, my culture and like my artistic references. Or, but it was really interesting. It's always interesting because you you work from something. You don't go uh, with your creation out of nowhere. There is a sing there is the, the song, there is the vibe of the singer, there is the story of CD Bay. So her inspiration, her life, uh, what she likes, you know, I had to go to play with that too. So it's interesting because it's not only me coming and like telling my story, it's me um, making a fantasy around someone, you know. You created a set as well, or how many people did you work with on this? So, for um, most of the music video I directed were a very little team. And to me, how many people? So, for Kilasan music video, um, there was, so I was directing, my friend Celia was helping with everything from costume to production and sets. Um, there was the Kilasan, the singer, uh, Mamanu Bat Batili, uh, Bat the creator, the dancer, and there was a cinematographer. But so we were five. And we worked with uh, Fiat Lux New York City for the editing and the post production. But so it's five people on set. And one agency um, I worked with to do the edit. For CD Bay, um, it's the same. It's like there is one DOP, Danaris. There is CD Bay, there is CD Bay's mom, which is helping a lot. There is a friend of CD Bay, which is like helping with everything, uh, like moving stuff. But it's me doing uh, direction, set, uh, most of the costume, props. And I have one assistant, uh, which is um, Cassie Hunter, which is doing all the pictures. And she's also helping me um, with the sets. And where does the bird come from? So, <laughs> good question. So, the, so uh, the funny story is that there is actually two birds, a male and a female. Um, they uh, were uh, nicely um, prêté by a friend of a friend of CD Bay. And so the bird handler was, uh, was on set with us. And we were like playing in between the two, the two birds because they have a super, um, they were both like very, 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 um, they had a lot of personality, both of them, and they both hated me. The cockatoo <laughs> hated me. So the, the, the female cockatoo was in love with the male, the main actor, Jamal, and the male cockatoo was in love with CD Bay. 
and it was so funny on set because they overreact like they are very sensitive and they don't really fly so for the flying scene we had to do it so many times and do like the perfect angle because those birds don't really fly so we were all like around them like trying to like tell them fly fly um, and they didn't let me approach uh, the sets so that was the main difficulty is that you know when you work on the set and you direct at the same time you have to go from the camera what what the image looks like to the sets and move every details because what's real is not the same in the frame and so I had to do those back and forth but the bird wouldn't let me they were like uh, getting crazy you know? it's like an Alfred Hitchcock scene what? to be heaven <laughs> exactly were they making much noise because they make that horrible sound no? yeah they were making a lot of noise <laughs> But I, I really, um, they really bring a nice vibe on set. Uh, it's just to a certain point I was, um, I was stressed out because I couldn't really like move when they were there. So um, it's it, it's um, like having animals on set. Of course, it's a it's a different uh, work process, but it's really interesting. So is this what you want to do now? To write more than like designing? And I feel I feel I choose to live in Los Angeles because it's a place that could allow me to like go from one to another. Um, because for a music video like that, I'm also designing. You know, when I'm making the set, like I, I'm being crafty. You know, I can't just be someone like saying, "Oh, this looks good" or "This doesn't look good." I need to be involved in the process. So, of course, if I have, um, if I can have a team to help, that's better, you know. But uh, I will always, whatever I will do, I will always be involved in um, in the craft situation because that's something really important to me. When you started out, Matthew Barney, yeah, um, Matthew Barney, I was. Um, I was like 24 or 25, maybe. Um, I began to work uh, for his studio. I was on the set as an intern, and they gave me some uh, big, crazy props, you know, to do, and I loved it. I was on a River of Fundament, mm -hmm. which is his last opera film of five hours. Uh, that he, he did with Jonathan Bepler in New York and um, yeah so I, I begin to do the props and finally after a few months of uh, working and crazy set and amazing uh, experiences I had to uh, they put me in charge of the costume department so that was really interesting because um, for the actors three I was mostly um, talking directly with Matthew about the psychology of the character and what he wanted and what was the most important for him and you know he would bring like uh, Google images of weird stuff and I would have to understand you know like <laughs> what's in his mind but um, that was definitely um, uh, uh, the, one of the most challenging experiences I had. Because I, I, I barely talked English at the time, and it was my first real like costume design job, you know. I never had really a technical uh, education, so I really had to like um, I would say um, first be a pirate because it's about you don't know everything. And even if people uh, know that you don't know everything, it's about like somehow making them trust you, even if you don't know, and and learning while doing. It worked. It worked. Yeah, it worked. And what are you reading right now? So many books. So right now, uh, the book is a little um, uh, abimé. 
Uh, I killed it a little bit. I'm reading a, a sci a erotic sci-fi book, a novel of uh, Alexandre Jodorowsky. Um, it's really good. If you don't know what to read this summer, and there is like amazing illustration inside also. How easy is it to find this book? It must be out of print. Honestly, I don't know. Where did you find it? I found it in a library. It, it must have been in a good library somewhere. I don't remember. I think it was in LA, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it must be in LA because it's in English. So you met him briefly? So yeah, I um, he was uh, Alexandro was uh, projecting his movie at the Egyptian theater a few months ago. Which one? Endless poetry. Alors, there was Holy Mountain. Uh -huh. There was um, the one with the lonely man um, walking. In. Yeah, thank you. There was El Topo and there was the last one, I'm not going to remember the name, but it's a family that owns a circus. Yeah. English poetry, yeah. or dance of reality, because there's like a, a trilogy. He's working on the next one. We should leave him. And so I wait for hours and I finally gave a drawing to uh, Alexandro, so I was really happy. Voilà, for the whole story. So, um, Elle est, elle est, Los Angeles is still, a, it's still a nice place to meet all the weirdo and the people that are like fascinated by um, movies. You know. Great, thank you. Thank you.